If you're like me and you've ever thought about making your own dog food, you may have been a little bit intimidated at the thought of, oh, can I put it together? Will it be affordable? How do I make it so that my dogs get enough vitamins and minerals that I know they need every day? Where would I get that stuff? I, I thought about it for a long time and I finally took the plunge after reading the book by Dr. Karen Becker, uh, The Forever Dog. I highly recommend it. Everybody that has a dog should read The Forever Dog. Seriously, it is a great book. It's got so much information in it. I will probably read it five or six times. It's so good. Link down below. You can get it on Amazon. It's a great, great book. And she does have recipes in there for making your own dog food. This is not one of those recipes. This is something that I put together. It's kind of a conglomeration of a couple of different recipes. And uh, you can mix your recipes up. It's so cool to do that. I am also going to put a link in for Dr. Harvey's uh, Canine Health. Dr. Harvey's is what I use as a base. It has all the vitamins and minerals in it that your dog is going to need. Um, it looks a little bit like instant oatmeal. It reconstitutes with water. It's got some goat's milk and things in it. So if you can see close up of there, little flakes in there, um, some dehydrated vegetables. And uh, it's just a really good base product to put with your dog's food every day. Now, I don't make a big batch of that. I make it per meal. So you've got, depending on the size of your dog, a scoop or two scoops or whatever it is with some water in their bowl. And then I add the mixture that I'm going to show you how to put together here. That's meat and vegetables and maybe some fruits and things. That's the beauty of being able to make your own dog food. You can put in it a whole bunch of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's really good for your dogs that they don't get on a daily basis if they're just eating kibble. Uh, today, we're going to put some apples in their food, some, uh, some green beans, some carrots, maybe some broccoli. I just throw kind of whatever I get on sale at the grocery store. So, so you got to kind of think outside the box. If it's good for your dog, uh, grab it. If it's on sale, that's even better. So here we go. I've got the pots and pans here on the stove. There's four pots on the stove. I'm going to make four batches at one time. I found that's the most expedient way to make it. I've also got some little casserole dishes. These are plastic uh, with a lid that uh, I actually got at the dollar store. <laughs> and the reason I got these particular dishes are they stackable and I can put eight on the bottom shelf in my freezer. So let's get right to it. I'm going to go ahead and get this started. So let's put the meat in to cook. So I've got the ground turkey in here. I've got it in all four pots and I'm just going to kind of mash it up a little bit. Don't add anything to it like salt or pepper You just because you don't want to add spices to it and just kind of want to let it brown. Uh, so I've got all of these on just a little above medium heat. They'll cook pretty fast since they're not frozen. So I'm going to go ahead and cook these up. One thing I am going to do here is add a couple of things that I like to put in there and I'll drop a link down below as to where to get these and they are essential oils. I like to add a couple of different essential oils and I'll tell you why here in a second. Okay now I've got in these pots I've got two and a half pounds in each pot. I buy the turkey either at Sam's Club, that's the cheapest way to get the ground turkey is at Sam's Club. And uh, the reason we're using ground turkey is because Zealot, my, uh, my Irish and White Setter, is allergic to uh, chicken. And she also has some kidney issues, so she can't eat beef. Um, so ground turkey it is. She can eat turkey or lamb. Turkey is obviously much more affordable and readily accessible than lamb is. So we're doing ground turkey. Once again, it's it's two. These are two and a half pound packages at Sam that I got at Sam's Club. The ones you can get at the regular grocery store like Kroger, City Market, are uh, um, three pounds, and they are a little bit more expensive. Uh, it's about fifty cents more a pound than it is at Sam's Club. So if you're making a big batch like I am today, I'm actually going to make eight uh, batches so that I can freeze them. I may make nine so that I can have one to put in the fridge that's ready to go but uh, eight of these and uh, I'm going to add a little bit of a couple of essential oils. So let me grab those. Today's essential oils that I'm going to be putting in, the, in these batches of food, I'm going to put a one to two drops of oregano oil per batch. 
Now, the reason you don't want to put more than that is it can be really hot and it's super spicy. Oregano oil does have antibacterial properties in it though, so it's really good for gut health, and, uh, but a little bit goes a long way. You don't want to use very much. So I'm talking one drop for every three pounds of food. We're just going to drop it in on the meat while it's cooking and give it a stir. So there's, watch it, you gotta watch it and make sure you don't get more than a drop. One, one. Unless, you know, you're, if your dogs like oregano, mine are not super fond of it. The second one that I'm gonna be using today is fennel. Fennel is uh, very, is, is uh, something that calms their stomach it can be, it can have very, uh, uh, what do I want to say, anti-nausea uh, type things. So if they are, if they do have tendencies to that. Now my other two do not. Lucy and Levi are fine. Zella, however, she gets upset stomachs very easily. So one or two drops of fennel, and it does smell really good, and they do like it. It's kind of tasty. So we're going to go ahead and put a drop or two of fennel in each batch. Like I said, be careful, don't put too much. And you can really smell it cooking. So that's the beginning of it. We're gonna let our meat cook up here and I'll be right back. So, I've got some bone, uh, bone I'm gonna add some bone, bone uh, powder to these mixtures. I have added a little bit of uh, this Better Bones, and you can get this at Four Leaf Rover, and I'll drop a link below to get this. This is a great product. Um, I use some of their other probiotics and uh, immune support for Zella because she does have some issues. So I'm gonna add, it states on this package to add two teaspoons per pound of meat. Now for what I'm doing here, I'm not gonna add two teaspoons per pound. That would be more than what I need in this recipe specifically. So I'm going to add two teaspoons per pot. So two teaspoons in each pot of the meat. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just grab a teaspoon and uh, you can see that it is a, it's a fine powder. The folks at Four Leaf Rover are super helpful. If you call them up, they are happy to talk to you and answer any questions that you might have about their products. So I highly recommend getting Four Leaf Rover on board. So once we've got our bone, our bone powder mixed in, we're going to add some eggs and just kind of, kind of mash it up and mix those eggs in there. Um, I'm going to turn my heat down on some of these. Since I'm filming this, I'm going a little bit slower than I normally would. <laughs> oh, and make sure you drain most of the fat off after the turkey is fully browned. Go ahead and take some of that off. Now, I have a good friend, Ashley Edstrom. Hey, Ashley, if you're watching this video. And she has chickens, so we get some eggs from her, and they are awesome, little farm fresh eggs. So if you've got friends that have chickens, hit them up for eggs. They're usually either free or much cheaper than what you can get them for at the grocery store. <laughs> and just mix the eggs in. You kind of have a, you'll see them just start to cook all over the meat. You just want to stir the meat up really good with those eggs on there. It gives them a little constitution. It's also a little extra protein of a different kind. And so I've got eggs in each one of these. I'm putting two eggs in each pot right now. So we've got two eggs in each pot. And that will give us a good starting place for all of this. Once again, like I said, if you want to drain the, the most of the grease and fat off of the if you're not if your dog is sensitive to that because a lot of too much fat can often cause pancreatitis issues and you certainly don't want to run into that all right now that we've got our eggs added into each batch here like i said i've turned my heat down a little bit once you get the meat brown you might want to turn your heat down just a hair and uh that'll I'll be uh, plenty because you're going to let some things steam here. I'm going to let some vegetables and some fruits steam in the, in this in these pots now that the eggs are kind of cooked in. Then I'm going to add 
some Granny Smith apples. These guys love apples. If you do some research on apples, sometimes the red apples are not always the best for your dogs. The green skinned ones are much better. And so I've got some Granny Smith apples I've chopped up over here and we're gonna add those to the mixture. So I've got about one medium apple and I'm gonna add half of it to this batch. Now you don't wanna get too carried away with uh, your your um, fruits that have a lot of fiber in them, especially if you are just starting out with this, because a lot of fiber can cause some other intestinal issues. So that's why I'm only adding a little, about a half an apple to each batch. That way they get some good fiber. And you want to be careful if you're adding pumpkin or squash. Now I've got squash cooking in the oven. I've cleaned out a squash, I baked it. Um, I'm going to put it in a bag in the freezer for next time. So the next batch I make will have squash in it. Just be careful with your high fiber foods that you aren't putting too much in there for them. Okay, so there are our four batches of cooking. Now we're gonna add some canned um, vegetables. Now I've drained these already. So there's some green beans. This one, this batch is gonna have green beans in it. And a little bit of broccoli. We've got some broccoli florets and things. I will probably break these up a little bit. You don't want all these big chunks and pieces in there. So just break those up. And uh, some broccoli is some great is a great vegetable for your dogs. And most of mine really love broccoli as well. So if your dogs are fans of broccoli. It's a great addition. A little broccoli in this one. And I'm also going to add a can of carrots. So you see what I'm saying about mixing it up? Just like you and I don't want to eat, well, I could probably eat tacos every day, but, but you and I don't want to eat the same foods every day. It's great to give your dogs a little bit of variety in what you're feeding them. So adding some broccoli to one and some green beans to another one kind of just gives them a little bit of a variety. And their food. So now in these batches like we just talked about we've got carrots in one, we've got some green beans in one, we've got some broccoli, some uh, apples, some chopped up apples. We're kind of just letting those simmer now that we've drained the, the uh, fat off and uh, just kind of steaming the vegetables for a minute. Um, I'm going to add as the last ingredient, oh and we've got eggs. So it's the meat, eggs, the bone broth, some uh, vegetables, either green beans, broccoli, whatever kind of, uh, of vegetable you want to put in there. Carrots, carrots are great. And then the last thing I'm going to add, and because our dogs do need a little bit of fruit too, these are blueberries are high in antioxidants. So I'm going to put some blueberries in each one. Besides that, they really like the flavor. So you can add some blueberries, and we're not going to put a lot, but we're just going to put some in there to add a little flavor that they will really enjoy. If your dog likes blueberries, this is a great addition to your dog food. And this is our last step because we've kind of let everything else kind of steam and cook up. All right, so I'm gonna put two big handfuls, maybe three, in there, in there. Just You just kind of have to measure what your dogs uh, will be interested in. And since I'm making eight batches, I'm going to save some of these for my second group of, of batches. Um, not use them all in these. All right, so now we've got my, I've, lo I've lost my spoon. <laughs> so we kind of stir it up. Now this batch is, looks like it's pretty much pretty well done because it was the first one we started with the green beans in it. The second batch that's going to be done is the one with the carrots here. And you want to make sure when you're buying, if you're buying canned vegetables instead of uh, frozen vegetables, and I do either or, depending on what's on sale. So I always check at the supermarket which, which canned, um, if it's canned is on sale or if frozen is on sale. Frozen I feel is a little bit better for them than canned. But you know, if you're on a budget like I am, 
you get what you can get, right? Make sure you, they don't have a bunch of salt in them. So try to get the low sodium ones if you can possibly do that. So now we're gonna continue here and this one is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, casserole dish ready to put it in the freezer. All right, I'm gonna use a two cup uh, measuring cup scoop to kind of scoop this out because if I turn it over, I will dump it all over the place and I don't really wanna do that because I just, I just put it together. So we're gonna put, just kind of scoop it out of the pan into this casserole dish. And these are two quart casserole dishes. Like I said, I got them at the dollar store and they work great if you're stacking. I, I have run them through the dishwasher, so they are dishwasher safe to a point. I am sure that at some point they will um, not be so, uh, so friendly. And then I usually just get it all in there. And then before I put the lid on, I will set it aside and let it cool for a minute. So that's all there is to it as far as putting together your homemade dog food um, the part that you are going to be using to add to your base. Now, when I, now in a few minutes, I'll go ahead and we'll put a, the base together with the food so you can all see what that looks like. And you kind of want to judge how with the size of your dog because what is recommended on the package might be from you know 35 to 51 pounds you need to put this many scoops. Well, depending on the size of your dog, that is a big difference in poundage, right? So my dogs, they use a little bit less than what's recommended on there. The two larger ones are about 55 pounds, and so they get one and a half scoops of the Dr. Harvey's, and they get three, two thirds of a cup of the meat mixture. I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Okay, so now we're at the final stage of putting our dog food together. And I've got their bowls out and we're ready to go. And I'm just gonna show you a little bit about how I put together the Dr. Harvey's base and then add their food. So we've got the, the base food here. Lucy is a, a little border collie mix and she doesn't weigh as much as the two bigger dogs. So she only gets one scoop of the base food. Bella and Levi each get one and a half scoops of the base food. This is what it looks like. You can see the uh, peas and the vegetables in there. So they each get one and a half food. Once, once again, I'll put a link to this on Amazon. That is, a, a Dr. Harvey's also has a website. I will tell you, I'm in Colorado and it takes a little while for the, um, the food to get to me once I order it. Um, so I prefer to order it on Amazon. So that's all there is to putting the food, the base together. I'm gonna add some hot water. And once you add the hot water, it says to let it sit for eight minutes. It just gives the, uh, everything a little bit of time to, to pop up and constitute. So there is the base put together. Now for Zella's food, I'm going to add a little bit of extra to it. Uh, like I mentioned before, I have been doing the uh, Four Leaf Rover supplements for her. We've got one here called Protect, which is soil-based probiotics, and that's a whole nother subject. Soil-based probiotics are really good. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the soil-based probiotics on her food. I am also going to add, because she does have immune issues and digestion issues, the Digest uh, product from Four Leaf Rover, a little bit of digestion aid, probiotics, and the uh, kidney and liver cleanse, which is uh, got mostly, it's got some mushrooms and some uh, different things in there, turmeric, I believe, in one of these products. These are the three that I add to her food after I put the water in and I just kind of mix it up. And now we're going to uh, let this sit for a little while and add the meat. Okay, now that we've let their food set up uh, a little bit for the base, we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, meat mixture that we made earlier. So Levi is gonna get two thirds of a cup of the meat mixture. 
Zella is also going to get two thirds of a cup of the meat mixture. And Lucy is going to get a little bit less than that because she's a much smaller dog. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So this is what Zella's bowl looks like. As you can see, it is pretty full. Um, if you've put this in a bowl, say, for, that you would be eating for dinner, it will take up an entire pasta, little pasta bowl. So it's quite actually a bit, a lot of food. This is the one for Lucy. As you can see, there's beets and things in there, so that gets a nice red color. And this is the one for Levi. Um, in this last batch that I'm mixing up that I'm showing you now, I added, um, I had some sweet potatoes and I cut those up and put them in there. So that's what it looks like as the finished product. I always add a little extra water, makes it a little soupier and kind of puffs it up a little bit. And I am going to put their vitamins in some, in a chunk of um, pumpkin and to top it off. So there's some for Lucy. And here is Zella's. I just tuck her vitamins inside of there and drop it on top. Same thing for Levi. He actually has a thyroid medication that he takes and I'll just pop his his vitamin and his thyroid tablet right inside there just like that and uh, pop it on top of his and that's pretty much it and they absolutely love this food um, they're so excited when we get to to make it and they're actually dancing around in the kitchen right now because they're so excited for their dinner that's it. That's how I make my homemade dog food. If you have any questions, please just drop me a note. Give me a call. Um, all of the links to the Four uh, Leaf Rover and Dr. Harvey's and the book that I mentioned, which is the Forever Dog. That's what gave me the, the courage to actually step out and make this dog food. Just give me a shout out. I'm happy to help and give you any advice that I might have. But my, my biggest advice is just dig in and do it. And if you watched this all the way to the end, thank you so much. If you found it helpful and informative, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to get notifications about future videos, hit the little bell so that you can get a notification when I make a new video because we're going to be having a lot of them come out in the next month. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.